I just wanted to go over the setup of the Pocket Wizard Mini TT1 and Flex TT5 system. Um, a lot of people just crack these open out of the box and plug everything in and go. And for the most part, this will work in factory default mode, but it's not optimal for various reasons, including the fact that you're not going to take advantage of the advanced feature set of the TT1, TT5. So pretty much you see the Pocket Wizard application open on the screen. Uh, you can get this from the Pocket Wizard website, pocketwizard.com. If you go into the support tab, they're going to have the downloads page, and they have the Mac and Windows version available for download for free. But I use a Mac, so I'm going to demonstrate in Mac OS X. I have the Mini TT1 plugged in, uh, as you can see here, and this is reset to factory default, so I can explain the, uh, the basic setup from here. As you can see here, uh, when you plug it in, it goes to show your settings tab, sub tab, configuration C1 and C2 are shown. A lot of people get confused. C1 does not mean channel 1, and C2 does not mean channel 2. They look at the device and think C1 and C2 means channel 1, channel 2. That is incorrect. Those simply mean, your, those simply mean configuration 1, configuration 2. You set up your channels individually for those specific configuration settings. Those are customizable. That's, they're customizable for however you want to set them up. But by default, the TT1 transmits on control TL1 and standard 1. A uh, quick, quick explanation of standard and control TL. Standard channel is simply the basic triggering mechanism for Pocket Wizard uh, radio triggers. If you were on standard channel, that simply means the transmitter sends a basic sync signal to the receiver to tell it to activate the flash or strobe. Uh, that's how the plus twos work, and in this case, you're, you can have the TT1, TT5 work if you wanted to but you do not get the other features that include the hypersync and high speed sync uh, capabilities that you can do over radio, the power tracking, the model lamp controls, or the remote strobe power uh, control with this AC3 zone controller. If you want to do any of those, any or all, you will need to use control TL. So, control TL, since I use that, I, I typically need to set my channels up accordingly. Um, I don't want to use the standard defaults, obviously, because if I'm in a situation where there's other photographers in a location who are using Pocket Wizards, if they just oh, cracked open the box and just started going, they're going to be using the defaults, which is one. So I'm going to set mine up for, like, let's say for the sake of being just this example, I'm going to set mine up for Control TL Channel 8. Um, you can also set the standard channel. What this means is what you need to understand is the TT1 sends on both control TL and standard at the same time. So if um, I had strobes in the same location that, both, that receives control TL and standard channels, as it stands by default, if I were on this situation with one and one, my TT1 will activate anything using control TL1 and receiving standard one. So this comes into play if you wanted to mix uh, strobes, some that don't use any advanced features where you, or you don't want to do anything special with those on those channels or special on the triggering, and some that you do. Let's say you had um, two lights receiving control TL signals and one other light you don't care because you manually set it up and it's not going to change at all. That would work fine. You can have that one set to standard and the other two on control. Typically you don't really do that, but it's available. But there's also situations where you'll be working with other photographers who are using the older plus two system who don't use control TL and maybe you want to work with them, you can set your pocket wizard to send on standard channels. So going back, let's go ahead and set mine to channel eight. And I want to, let's say if I'm going to be working with people, I want to work with them on channel three. We'll all agree for standard channel three. That's that's pretty much it right there as far as the transmitter. I don't mess around with any of the other defaults. I leave them as they are, or except for this one, the modeling light control. What this means is the Pocket Wizard TT1 will send a modeling light control signal to the receiver. Um, you can tell it when to sleep, how much to sleep in the tracking. I turn all this, all this off. The reason being is the Einstein 
uh, strobes, which I do use with the Control TL features using the Power MC2. I tell it to turn. I will turn. I will usually turn the mono lamp off if I'm on battery power, because I don't want mono lamps will sap battery power. Uh, for example, the Vagabond Lithium. F if, if I had the monolight control turned on, what will happen in situations I'll be shooting, um, the mono lamp is off, when we take a short break, the pocket wizards go into a sleep mode, which sends the strobe into sleep mode. When it wakes up again, what this will do is it will turn on the mono lamp of the Einstein. It'll override the mono lamp that was turned off manually on the back of the Einstein. I don't want that to happen because there will be cases where I'm, it'll turn on and I won't notice it, especially because we'll be out in the outdoors in daylight and I won't realize it turned on and 10 minutes later when my battery dies, I'll understand that, oh, oh, I accidentally turned on the mono lamp. So I, I turn this off to make sure that the pocket wizards don't override my settings. And that's pretty much it as far as that's concerned. Um, in this miscellaneous tab, you'll notice this, that the uh, camera model um, I usually leave it on auto detect since I use two camera bodies, even though I pretty much use my 5D Mark II exclusively uh, for portrait shoots. The reason why I leave it on auto detect is so um, if I want to switch my 7D, I don't have to worry about getting, having a laptop to reset this. So I'll leave it on auto detect. What this does, though, is it requires you to take that one test shot to make sure it, 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 it syncs to your camera body or it detects your camera body. But that one extra test shot doesn't really mean much, so I'll leave that on auto detect. So I have my configuration C1 set up to send on Control TL8 standard three, and I just turned off the uh, mono lamp control. I'll save that. So what about C2? Um, of course, you're going to want to set C2 to on an alternate channel in situations where you might have a channel conflict with another photographer who may be working in the area with you. So you don't want anybody, you know, hitting each other's lights at the same time because that's going to ruin your shoot. So, uh, since I have this on 8 and 3, I'm going to go ahead and alternate C2. Uh, we'll set that up for 9 and 4. This gives me the capability to use control channel, uh, transmit on control TL9. And if I'm in a situation where I'm also working other photographers using plus 2s um, and they're on 4, I can use mine to my configuration C2 to send on channel 4. So I'll go ahead and set that up, turning off my modeling lamp control, and save the changes. And that's pretty much it for the TT1 setup. Obviously, we need to set up our TT5 to correspond to the channels that we just set on the C1, C2 uh, configurations. So we're going to go ahead and do that. 8, 3, 9, 4. We'll remember those. I'll go ahead and unplug a TT1. I'll plug in a TT5. Same deal as before. Um, if you notice, there's a couple extra settings here, it's transmit and receive. The reason why is because the TT5 is a transceiver. That means it can function as both a transmitter and a receiver, whereas the TT1 is only a transmitter. Um, sometimes um, you'll want to use the TT5 as a backup transmitter. Maybe you're working with somebody and they want to try your lights out, or you have another body that you need to shoot at, at the same time. So. We'll go ahead and just set this up to send and send the same channels that we set for the TT1, 8 and 3 for control TL and standard channel, respectively. Um, for the receiving end, um, what what's you'll need to understand is uh, the receiver can only receive one type of channel. It, un unlike the, transm the transmit, it can transmit both control TL and standard at the same time. It can only receive one or the other at the same, uh, one or the other. You can't do them both. So, since I work exclusively in Control TL, I'll go ahead and set that to channel 8, since that's what I'm transmitting on. And this kit is not selectable unless you uncheck that. So, let me check that back, and we'll use Control Channel 8. I'm going to go ahead and back to the model lamp control, turn that off, and then same with C2, turn off model lamp, and set up my channels for, I believe, 9 and 4 is what I set them up for. And Control Channel 9. We'll go ahead and save those changes. Wait for it to reset. And that's it. C1 is set up for 8 and 3 uh, to transmit, receive on 8, receive on 9, transmit on 9 and 4. 
mono lamp is turned off, mono lamp control is turned off for both configurations. Um, that's pretty much it as far as my setup is concerned. Uh, so I'm ready to go. I'm going to go to a shoot. My TT1, T TT5 are set to use control TL8 on and control TL9 on those two settings. So if I'm in a situation, hopefully no one will be, I won't be in a situation with multiple shooters and end up we all someone is on eight and the other guy's on nine and I won't have anything to shoot, which is kind of the drawback the way this is set up. Since you can only set up two different channels as opposed to being able to select them on the, the devices themselves, you need to plug this into a laptop or a computer to make your changes. Um, that's why the plus twos are actually kind of nice in a group situation because you can actually manually select one through four on the actual device themselves or with the pocket wizard uh, multi-max you can there's that led screen and the selectors on the back you can change between 1 and 32 on the uh, standard channels uh, i guess it's a small price to pay i don't know if they'll ever release a pocket wizard flex ct mini tt1 flex ct5 update or whatever device update where they have an actual led lcd screen on it where you can select the channels on the devices themselves rather than using a computer. That's pretty much it. If you have any more questions, check out my blog at ocabj.net. That's O-C-A-B-J.net. Uh, that finishes up this demo, and hopefully this helps out. Thanks.